Today, we're going to add drag and drop controls to this task list using Framer Motion. You can grab the starter code in the description to follow along. To start, I have this basic task list on the right, and you can see on the left here, I'm just pulling some task data, which is coming from a dummy database file and mapping over it to show these task items. And within each task item, I'm just outputting a checkbox here from ShadCN and the label of the task. So to add basic drag and drop functionality to this list, Framer Motion actually makes this pretty simple. And I've already got Framer Motion installed in this project, so we'll just use some of the wrappers that it provides directly. So for this div that surrounds the list, I'm gonna change this to a reorder.group object. And let's change the ending tag as well. And you'll notice it needs some properties here. So let's just go here and add the values property, which is the array of data that this group of items is going to use. In this case, that's just the tasks array. And I also need to pass an on reorder function. So this will be what should this group call when there's a reorder to reset the values here. And so you can see tasks is just a state variable. So we can just pass set tasks into this. Now we need to go into the task item component and convert this to be a reorder.item component and also replace the ending tag. And this also needs a specific property called value. And this is just the value that corresponds to this values array that we passed in the group. So in this case, it will just be the task data that gets passed in. So now if I try dragging one of these items, you can see it's now draggable. It now moves and reorders the list. Now you might notice when we drag right now, there's this weird behavior where the item becomes marked as complete or incomplete. And that's because right now, this whole item element, including the checkbox, is technically draggable. You can see I can click on the checkbox and I can drag it from there. Now this doesn't really make sense in this context. We can limit the draggable area to start the drag and prevent this behavior. So this will require overriding some of the default drag and drop behaviors, but pretty straightforward here. So if we go into the task item component, and on this reorder item, I'm going to pass the drag listener prop. I'm going to set this to false. So by default, if I try this again, the drag actually has stopped now because we've said stop listing for drag events. So now we need to re-enable it manually. So I'm going to go up here and create a controls object, which will be use drag controls from Premier Motion. Then I'm going to go down to this item and set drag controls manually to this controls object. And now we need to tell this control object when to turn on. So we'll go down here and let's say we only want this to be draggable from the text. So that will be corresponding to this div here. So I'm just going to pass in on pointer down and on this event, we'll just say controls dot start. That's the event. So now let's try this. If I drag from the checkbox, it doesn't work. But if I drag from this text here, we get the drag. And by the way, if you really want to turn off the ability for this to get toggled when you click on the text, right now there's this HTML4 attribute on this label. If I just comment this out, you'll see now I can't even click it normally and it won't toggle, it'll only toggle on the checkbox. And now it definitely switches off as I drag the ability to toggle this. Okay, there's one other thing we can do. So if I take this item and if I just drag it, notice I can just drag it all the way off the screen. If I let go, it does bounce back to the right place, but this probably doesn't make much sense to be able to allow this to happen. So let's add some constraints to how far we can drag outside these bounds. So the easiest way we can do this is on this item, we can define drag constraints and we can define it to be based on another element in the DOM. So for example, what we're going to do here is we're going to pass this container that corresponds to this group pass as the constraints but we need a reference to the parent container. So let's go set that up. So we're gonna have this be a prop that each item will get passed in. So we'll call it container. This will be of type mutable ref object. And let's say it's nullable here and then make sure we add this here as well. And then we can just pass this container as the constraints. Now, of course, we need to set this up on the page here so we can pass it in. So I'm gonna go here to the top. I'm gonna set up a new ref. Container is use ref initially null. I'm going to import use ref. Down here, I'll add the ref to this group object so container, and then I'll make sure I just pass it in as a prop. So now let's try this one more time. If I drag, you can see now it's much more difficult to get it out. You can see it's so possible, but now it's much more difficult to drag outside. Now this is because of elastic rubber banding that comes by default. 
Just to limit this a little bit more, we can control the elasticity there by another property here, call it drag elastic. I'm gonna set this to be 0.1, but you can set this to something else. But now if I drag, it's even more difficult actually here at the edges. If you wanted to, you can just set this to zero. And this is the most extreme case where I can't have any elasticity. So you can even see I can't I can't go past the container at all. But I think leaving a little bit in is, is a bit of a nice touch. That's it for this video. If you found it helpful, you should also check out this video on screen. Leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.